So hello, welcome to our class. So for this session, I have here Titus Ronald Tagaan, who is uh, currently a manager, audit manager in Massars in Dublin, Ireland. Okay. So Titus uh, was my former student. So he started as uh, when he became a CPA, top six, tama no? So in yes, tama, correct? Five. Ah, yeah. top five, sorry. <laughs> So top uh, five in the licensure examination for CPAs last uh, 2016, correct? Na? So 2016 mm -hmm. board exam. And uh, he has worked as an auditor in PwC Isla Lipana here in the Philippines, uh, part of uh, the PwC network. And then uh, later on, he transferred to Deutsche Bank, also here in the Philippines, in Titus. Na? And then uh, finally, he moved to Ireland to Mazars, and uh, he is now an audit manager there, okay? So Taito service line is uh, in banks, auditing banks and the uh, financial uh, services firm, like uh, investment banks, correct? Dealing in securities, so things like that. And uh, for this session, Titus will share his uh, experiences in auditing banks and other entities now involved in financial services. So, Titus, uh, again, good evening, good afternoon in you kasi Titus ngayon is in Ireland. So, there's uh, an air eight hours difference, right? No? Yeah. Between the Philippines and the time in Ireland. So, let's get straight to our topic. So, our topic that uh, we will be discussing is about uh, auditing banks and other financial entities. So, like what I said earlier, Titus will share his uh, experiences So in uh, auditing this type of entities. So the first question, Titus, is uh, what is, I'm sure you have uh, experience auditing also other entities like trading or manufacturing. So what will be the differences in uh, auditing between auditing a bank and uh, other entities you know, from other industries? Go ahead, Titus. Yeah. So I think, um, sir, the primary difference between uh, a bank, auditing a bank and auditing, well, let's, let's say trading or manufacturing or even service entity it's really on the products itself. Because a bank offers you cre money, credit, and it also takes in money as deposits. So, and, and with that, it, it, its profit and loss, its revenue items is different. So it does not have your sales or it does not have your cost of goods sold, but it rather has interest income, interest expense, which is um, based on the credit the credit loan, the amount itself. So um, usually our, our, our focus really is on the balance sheet more rather than on the p and mm -hmm. As what I, I, I think I would say, like for a manufacturing, they're really looking at its cost of goods sold, its sales, but rather on our end, what we're really looking at is on the loans, loans to customers, the deposits, the investments, really on the balance sheet side more than the um, PNL because the PNL will be an effect of the balance sheet. So in a manufacturing, the balance sheet is the effect of the PNL because once you have your sales, you get AR, etc. So I think that's that's probably the primary difference when you audit a bank and a manufacturing company. I see. So that's a very good uh, relationship. No, that uh, the difference no, in relationship. Then so which drive what. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Titus. Now, the, the second question is uh, about the structure of your audit team. So here in uh, in the Philippines, now you were already auditing back. So what would be the typical size of your auditing or of your audit team when you're auditing, uh, let's say, a big universal bank? And you can also relate with uh, with your uh, current, uh, for example, audit team there in uh, in Ireland for example because you're now you're also still auditing uh, banks no universal banks mm -hmm. or different mm -hmm. types of bank so what's a typical size of uh, an audit team well uh, if, if you're talking about a big a universal bank sir i think um back in my time during that uh when i was a senior in pwc I, we were we had three managers well one partner three managers three seniors three experienced and one as one associate and then we had interns as needed so just on other things so i think they've actually increased the swell size so i think our time it already increased in staff because it was very evident that it was a very stressful job 
So more and more, I think they're adding more. Like if I, I see posts from um, my um, my managers before they have like Zoom, they're like more already in number. So mm-hmm. I think that's that was for me. But then for a universal bank as well, you'd have subsidiary. So that was just for the parent bank. Okay. We'd, we would have a different team for our savings bank, for our leasing and retail, for our investment. And that's separate as well from like for the investment um, arm of the bank. So it's, it's, a, it's a very big team um, because it's, um, there's a lot of products. So I think on our end that time, I'm sure it's going to be different in different um, firms, but in how we divided it in PwC before was that it was three, three cycles. You're mm-hmm. looking at lending, lending cycle, and then the other one was treasury. And then the other one was um, others. So you'd say it's others, anything other than the lending and the treasury, then you'd get the others. So that would be expenses. And even the, uh, even actually the deposits was under them, but uh, that's, how, that's just how we divided it. But I'm sure it's different with, probably it, it would be different with EY or what, or Deloitte or KPMG, but that's how we divided it. So it's um, based on the product site, uh, the service and how we divided the team. So usually for the banks, that's the two major uh, department or operations that they they undertake. Now, yung lending operations and then the treasury operations. Now, uh, follow up on that. What's what's the difference between the two in in your own uh, experience or knowledge? Yung lending business ng bank versus din sa treasury. Um, the different the main difference is lending will really be on the credit side. So it's really on the loans. Etc. Well, we're, when we say the treasury, when we had it, we were looking at the cash, the investments, and even the uh, repos. So I think that's the special, uh, a different product as well for a bank. You could have repurchased securities and the investments, uh, financial assets. That's that's going to be with them. We'd have the credit. So if if we were going to talk about risks, probably would say there's is the market risk. We'd have the lending cycle would have the credit risk. Credit risk, correct. Okay, so again, thank you for that, Titus, for that very informative uh, parang insight no, in the operation mm-hmm. of the bank. Now, uh, my next question is that in your uh, team briefing or planning sessions, brainstorming, so uh, what are the usual uh, areas that you are asked to focus when you will be performing your audit procedures? Uh, I believe that will uh, depend on, on the role or, or the area that you will be assigned off, whether in lending mm. or in uh, treasury. But uh, if you've been to both, uh, for example, uh, sites no? or mm. areas uh, in your experience, so what are the usual uh, focus area areas? Um, yeah, so I think um, for a bank generally, I think it's... Well, in any audit, I think even other audits would have the you know the rebuttable, uh, the fraud risk. I think that's one of the main things to be considering of. It's the fraud risk on management override of controls, as well as your revenue, your revenue, fraud risk on revenue recognition. So I think those are one of um part of the key areas that any audits would be undertaking, and even a bank would actually also be um. Um, discussing on and aside from those two we'd also have i think the main areas would be the credit risk so i think it's really because um for a bank it's um significant risk really is on the credit risk it's the ability of those he uh of the ones that he lends money to if they would be able to pay because if they won't be able to pay then the bank would be bankrupt so i think that's uh i think the credit risk side of the audit that's the main thing. So when we when we talk about that, we would also be talking about then the expected credit losses that yeah. a bank would recognize for its um, loans and its financial financial assets. So I think that's that's for the credit side. Now, if we were talking about treasury, then it might be like um, the the bank would also have level. It it depends on how. Um, how complex the investment securities are of a bank or even the derivatives that it has. But um, what, as what I can see before, well, before when I was still in PwC, I think banks in the Philippines are relatively 
Um, they're not yet as complex. The investments that they have are not as complex yet. And they would only be dealing more on the plain vanilla um, derivatives. So it's very straightforward. So um, usually the, assess the risk assessment that you would have is not really as high as it would compare to how we would assess an ECL versus how we would assess the valuation of the securities that they would have. Because the securities that a bank well, I think the banks in the Philippines would have are not really as complex as they are. So sometimes they're really just um, readily available. So they're level one or they might be a little bit of level two, but not really as um, going as high as level three. So it's not, um, I would say we would still discuss about it, but not as hard as how we would discuss uh, the ECL, the credit risk side. And then of course, there would be other matters, of course, if whatever the bank has. So I think, um, I think if you really want to see what a bank's audit um, has focused on, you'd, you'd look at the audit opinion already because that and the audit opinion now, we would have the key audit key matters. Audit. Correct. So the key audit matters would let you know what was the uh, audit focus of the audit team. So I think sometimes they would have the goodwill, um, the valuation of the goodwill, or they would have the complexity of the consolidation or whatnot. Um, so it, it really depends on, but the general ones you'd really see is the credit risk. I think that's that's normal in all banks. Every every bank audit ba bank uh, audit opinions would have the valuation of the ECL. Uh, yeah. So actually, your next question, I think, is uh, connected to what you have just discussed, uh, because uh, you mentioned already, you know, in the key audit matters. Uh, the the audit the partner or the audit team will uh, discuss there how they were able to address for example uh, how they assess the uh, how they uh, evaluate the assessment of the management uh, ECL but can you uh, discuss some um, for example a specific procedure or step how you assess for example significant uh, judgment from the management like uh, for example yung uh, assessing the ECL or the fair value estimate uh, specific uh, audit procedure because uh, we cannot normally see that in the discussion of uh, how they address the key audit matter. So normally generic, you know, like for example, inquiry, discussion with management, and then they will uh, discuss uh, some uh, performing of uh, test of control and uh, substantive test. But uh, can you cite, uh, for example, specific procedures that you can remember? Uh, for example, if you're auditing ECL or how the management assess the ECL of the bank. Okay. Um... So I'm just I'm just going to Anna. Um. So audits. So when usually if it's a key area, uh, uh, key audit matter. So for example, it's the ECL. I think one of the things really is, I think the one procedure that's really needed is your experts, because mm -hmm. these are um aside you well ISA five forty. So that's the I the ISA in relation to the estimates. I think it's um clearer this time that the management, we will have to understand how management does its estimates. So that aside from that, we will also be evaluating it. Now, as auditors, we are um, accounting graduates. We're not actually mathematicians. Correct. And correct. I, I'm sure your students would know it's accounting, it's not math. It's it's logic. It's, I know, it's not as deep math as it would be for a BS math major or an actuary major. So I think that's where it comes from that us as auditors, we won't be able to really validate um, these um, numbers because they would have management would have its own experts, its own math graduates, its own econ economists, for example. So we would be employing our own experts. So I think that's one of the key things. Um, I think if you are auditing a bank, you would really need to have your own expert in evaluating the um the ECL because it's not going to be easy. Like you can't just look at the numbers and say, oh, this is how they modeled their ECL. Because the model itself would um the model itself, the modeling of the ECL would include historical data right. as well as the how the math works with the um they have different terms for it. I can't remember it, but they would have different things to do, like all the statistical the statistical methods to validate it. And we, as auditors itself, as accounting graduates, we won't be able to say, oh, that, that's fine. Well, their experts said it's fine, but it's not really comforting 
So we would have to have our own experts validate and say, hey, okay, that's the same thing. So uh, it, it's right, it's this one. But there are also procedures for us as auditors because they, they would also have their managements. It's, I think one of it is really challenging. Like if they have, aside from the model itself, they would have overlays. They would have adjustments, top-ups that are judgments on their own. So I think we will just be looking at how much I, how, how did they come up with this? How, um, where are we getting the numbers from? So I think it's like validating as well those overlays, adjustments. That's one of the things um, to look at and challenging them. So why is it this one? So as well as in challenging them, we would also be performing sensitivity analysis. So sensitivity, how if, if we stress this, this factor, how big will be the difference? If we stress this one, how big will it be? So I think those are the things that will be um, procedures that we actually do. So aside from having our experts, we'll also be um, doing sensitivity analysis as well as stressing the factors that are there. In order to validate that, well, that's fine. So even if it's actually a worse environment, a worse economic environment, it doesn't seem the, uh, the numbers will go really, really high or it will make the bankrupt go um, the bank go bankrupt. So I think it's those things that we are looking for. Yeah, yeah, correct. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Titus. No? So yes, as uh, auditors, we will normally focus on the on the assumptions, on the inputs that they will be using. So because uh, like what Titus said, so banks will have their own uh, experts. The auditing will have their own experts. So on the side of bank, so I think it will be the modelers who are the, uh, who are uh, the experts that Titus was pertaining to. So those modelers are usually mathematicians and uh, economists. And together with their uh, with their RMs or relationship managers, they will analyze each loan. And uh, those information will be gathered and uh, the modelers will uh, will uh, project the information. For example, uh, will, will uh, this specific uh, customer will be able to pay in the future given the same, for example, uh, uh, same, uh, uh, what you call this a demographic compared to the, their other clients in the past and things like that. And uh, with that, kasi ngayon, di ba, companies are required na to estimate the credit loss. Unlike, unlike before, where in you, you still have to wait for impairment indicator before you recognize impairment. So with, with uh, when did this uh, happen? Ano, nung 2019. So, yep. No? So, something related to PFRS 9. Mm -mm. 2018. December 2018. Yeah. Yeah. 29. Nah, 2018. Yeah, mm -hmm. because uh, tama, no? before, so you you still have to wait for indicators of impairment mm -hmm. per financial instrument. But now it should be forward looking. So meaning to say day one, so you you, you have to have that estimate already. So mm -hmm. not for that, uh, what we call this uh, impairment indicator anymore. Okay. You don't anymore wait for. So <laughs> I, all loans already have an impairment in them. Yeah, correct. So it doesn't need anywhere to be really problematic. Okay. Have a loss allowance provided. Okay. So thank you, Titus. And then uh, another unique feature of the bank is that they are very dependent on uh, information technology or IT. Okay. But mm -hmm. how, how do you address that in audit? So this uh, uh, IT dependency of bank, you no, know, they they they're automated uh, transactions. So uh, how do you address it? Do you perform a uh, a lot of uh, TOCs or test of controls or substantive tests or combination. So can you tell us about it? Yeah, so I think, sir, um, with regards to IT, I think it's it's going to be the same with all um, industries that are really big and really focused on IT audits. We will be um, we will be asking the assistance of our IT audit specialists who will be looking at um, the controls over um, IT systems. So IT general controls. Okay. So the the governance, the framework, the systems that are involved. And then we will also be looking at um, IT automated controls. So the controls of the systems itself, the applications that are in there. So what are the automatic controls that they would have in order for us to obtain comfort over the balances? And we would also be looking at interfaces. So interfaces from one system to another, because for, like for, for a bank, you would have um, a system that is being used by the branch. 
So okay. you would have this um the system that takes in the deposits, but that's not already that's not yet your general ledger. That's just going to be a system um for them to process the loan the deposits or the loans. Then what you're going to look at, your IT audit specialists will be looking at is that is the system of the deposit or the loan working? Now, after that, they'd also be looking at does it transfer correctly to your general ledger? So that's that's what I call in the, that's what I said interface. So they'd be looking at that, ensuring that the controls in place are working and there were no issues during the year, as well as change on the general controls over this, the framework, the governance, the security, physical security, or even the IT security with regards to this, they would be looking at it. So that's um, as, as the audit, um, core audit, we would, we would be instructing them, taking a look at, oh, is this really the systems that we are looking at in our, um, in our walkthroughs, in the processes? And then we will be instructing them, look, take a look at this, the interface, the controls, etc. So I think that's um, where we will be able to obtain comfort. Because if if um, if a big company or a bank you would have is very manual, it's very prone to human error. And right. if it's prone to human error, it's not going to. We won't be comfortable with the numbers. And if it's that's the case, we would have to do more substantive testing. So. Well, the, the test that we will do is both. We would still be doing substantive testing, but at least the level that we will be looking for will be lower than, um, let's say, for example, we'd have 30 samples um, for because we tested controls. But if we didn't test controls, we, we might be testing 60, 90, 100. It, so it's, um, it, is, uh, it is really good to have um, IT audit for your big for the big companies because you'd be able to get more comfort and it's i think if a company that's really big doesn't have it audit it systems that are good it's i think it's also problematic and the board of directors or the management would really need to transition it because if they don't it's they might not be getting the correct data correct so Thank you very much, uh, Titus. Uh, any tips or messages for auditors or uh, students right now who would want to take this uh, career path to, to be in to be part of uh, the service line auditing of uh, banks and the uh, financial services uh, entities? So tips. Um, yeah, I think um, actually when I was um, I mean... <laughs> when I was um, like choosing where to go, I think it. Well, it was because my sister was also in financial services, but she also told me to go financial services because it was going to be easier. It might be easier to get abroad. It might be, but of course, but I'm sure. But I, but I also have friends who are not in the financial services. They also got to go abroad. So it's really, um, it's really just a choice. So it's, um, I think it's just that it also fascinated me at that point. Well, initially, sir, when I was in PwC, I was, when I was associate, I wasn't yet on the credit side, but then it's just that IFRS 9 implementation, et cetera, then it, it, it kind of fascinated me that, oh, it's something new. I didn't know it was stressful. <laughs> 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 so I moved to it. So I think it's just that if, you, if you're, you're taking a look at um, other things that are not what you've seen in the books, because it's not going to be in the books how ECL are really calculated, etc. Right. Like they'd say, the problems that you'd get, this is the ECL already. How much is your adjustment, etc. But how those numbers are, if that's something that you you'd like to know, etc. I think it it would be a good place to go. As well as well, I'm, I'm talking more about the credit risk, but then if also fair value, fair value side, like derivatives as well, valuing them, it's it would be a good insight, like just to see. Is that something you like or something, the models itself? But not necessarily you're the ones calculating them, but at least you get to see how it's done. Mm. Okay, so once again, thank you very much, uh, Titus, for those uh, very uh, good uh, insights now regarding this uh, topic. 
So I hope to talk to you again in the future. So as you progress in your career as well. Yeah. Oh, wala na sa audit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ni start pa na yung recording. Thanks, eh. Thank you.